Welcome to BergKnifeMaking.com. Today we're going to take a look at how to make a chef's knife out of one of our knife blanks. Now BergKnifeMaking.com offers a variety of different chef knife blanks. These are all water jet cut. Uh, they're profiled, the shapes are done, and the pinholes are pre-drilled. These can be transformed relatively easily into a variety of different uh, themed knives or style of knives, and this is up to your own creative ability. I'm not going to go into the etching on this video. On this video, this is part one of a two-part series. We're going to show you just the basics of taking one of these stainless steel knife blanks and making or finishing a chef's knife. So we're going to start by uh, etching or scribing two lines on the edge called railroad tracks. Those will be our guide. This is a push stick that I use, and I've curved the back corner just so it doesn't jam into my palm. The leading edge is actually angled forward a little bit. You'll see in a, in a little bit how I'll use that to press in on the, on the edge of the blade rather than the bottom. I'm going to start by just breaking the edge of the, of the uh, bevel. There's nothing fancy here. I'm just breaking that hard 90 degree edge. I'm using a 2x72 belt grinder. This is an origin blade maker, uh, two horsepower, variable speed. I'm using a very coarse grit belt. This is a 36 grit belt to remove the majority of the material. Now after I break that 90 degree edge, now I'm going to start to use that push stick. And you'll see that the upper end, end of that push stick is where the pressure is being applied. Now, look closely. I'm not really pushing in on the stick. I'm kind of holding the stick in position. And then as I'm pulling the knife uh, from, from left to right, I'm pushing back with my thumb on my right hand. So I'm kind of levering it against that, that push stick. So the tip of the knife is not going to dig in on the leading edge of the belt. And all I'm doing here is removing material. I can visually see the scribed lines on the edge of the blade and I can also see uh, where I ground to when I broke that 90 degree edge. From there on all I'm doing is is chasing that bevel line downward and making it you know you really want to just remove material chase that bevel line upward until it's almost even with the flat of the blade. Now I'm doing this in real time on this video. I, I don't want you to miss any of it. And you, you really will get a better idea as to how long it takes. Um, with this method, and I've done quite a few of them, I do each side in about two minutes. And this is the rough grinding. See that that bevel is going up more upward with each each pass. And now what I'm going to do is flip that push stick, so I'm applying pressure more towards the bottom of the blade, and I'm just going to blend as much as possible all of those grind lines. You don't have to be perfect here. You just kind of want to get it close. The main thing is that you don't want to have ever crossed over uh, the etched railroad track lines or the scribed lines. I'm going to do the exact same process on the other side of the blade. Use the same uh, push stick technique, coarse grit belt, 36 grit. Another couple minutes and that side is done. So now I've got very coarse grit grind lines. I'm going to use a shop magnet, a handled shop magnet, and I'm going to go vertical. I'm going to remove the 90 degree work table. And I've also changed the grit of the belt. This is now a 60 grit belt. And what I'm doing here is just trying to get rid of all of the 36 grit uh, belt grind lines. and to smooth out 
you know, all of those different, different grind lines. Now again, this doesn't have to be 100% perfect. We're doing the preheat treating bevel grinding now. I don't want to end up with any of those deep grooves, those, those deep grind lines, but post heat treating, we're going to clean this all up again with a, with a finer grit belt, an 80 and then a 120. But right now, we're just trying to merge all of those um, or get rid of all of those 36 grit grind lines. And this is really the, the majority of the work in doing one of these chef's knives. The rest of it is, is not, not really hard at all. So that's one side done. I just repeat that process on the other side. Uh, even though the, the knife blanks come with holes, you know, pre-drilled, all of those holes do have to be reamed. Uh, they were only located um, and created with a water jet. So you want to ream those out to the correct size. I use one size up on the uh, quarter inch holes. And uh, I also add, you know, ream down the one eighth holes if I want to use bolsters. And then I am going to chamfer each one of those holes. It just makes it a little bit easier when you're trying to place the pins later. You want to make sure you ream out those holes um, and chamfer it before heat treating. It's almost impossible after heat treating. Now, a lot of guys uh, kind of tend to stay away from stainless steel uh, because they don't have a, a heat treating oven. Uh, if you don't, don't let that stop you from working with one of these blanks. You can always send the blank out to a heat treating service like, like Peter's Heat Treating. Now, they're a little bit expensive if you're only sending them one blank or, or two blanks. But if you're making you know one or two pieces for your own use um, and you want to create a really good quality stainless steel knife that you're not going to have to worry about uh, rusting, uh, it's well worth uh, the money. If you're, however, uh, trying to sell these knives and, and doing little production runs, then a heat treating oven is definitely the way to go. Um, you're going to want to wrap the knives uh, uh, in tool wrap and create air t as airtight as possible envelopes by double folding each one of the seams before placing them into the heat treating oven. Now, tool wrap comes in two different um, uh, sizes or thicknesses. Uh, for our blanks, you can use the 321, which is good up to 2,000 degrees. Uh, AEBL stainless gets heat treated um, up to 1,950 degrees, and then there's a hold time on it. You have to hold it at that temperature uh, for about 15 minutes. Now, I like to do these in batches, so I'm going to put a batch of uh, stainless blanks these have all been, um, the rough grinds on the bevels have all been done. They've all been wrapped in the tool wrap. Put them into my even heat oven. Get it up to temperature. Hold it at that temperature 15, for 15 minutes. And then I'm going to plate quench these. Now I've got aluminum. Um, you, can, you, you can use solid aluminum. I, I happen to use tubed aluminum, a rectangular tubing. And I'm going to clamp these uh, right out of the oven between these two plates and clamp them closed. You, you don't want that stainless to be able to twist or warp at all during the cooling process. So you're going to clamp this real tight and then I'm going to blow compressed air right in the groove all around the knife. What's nice about the um, rectangular tubing is I can also blow air through each one of the, the tubes, the top tube and the bottom tube. And note that I put my, my hand on the other side. I can feel the hot air coming out. And it gives me you know, a real good indication you know, when that hot air really cools down, you know, I know that the blank has cooled down enough. The cooling process really only takes you know, a few minutes uh, I use tin snips then to cut off one side of that uh, tool wrap envelope. The knives are still going to come out a little on the warm side. You want to wear gloves for this process. And I didn't mention before, when you're working with the tool wrap, you definitely want to wear gloves. Um, that, that stuff is razor sharp and will cut you in a blink of an eye. 
So these are the blanks. They'll also go into a sub-zero uh, quench uh, in dry ice, and then they'll go into an oven for tempering. This way the knives are, are nice and hard, but they're not brittle. Uh, we'll come back in part two to show you how we transform these uh, blanks then uh, into a finished product. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, uh, I ask that you please leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'd like to give you an invite to our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. Um, and by all means, uh, check out the book that Jason Northgard and I put out last year called Introduction to Knife Making. And that can be found on bergknifemaking.com as well as amazon.com. Thank you very much.